Oh, is it on a ha ha cliche start to recording? All right. Hello everybody, today is Monday, January 11th. For my intro to game design class, a vlog coming out I believe next week, we have four projects and one of them is an individual game pitch. So for this game pitch, I'm gonna be fitting it in with the devlog and pitching Seashell essentially. And alongside the general concept, the first two zones. First two, yeah, you heard me right. A friend of mine sent me an idea for like a carnival themed zone and I thought it was a really good idea. And he had this idea for a main villain. And I was like, God, that's such a good core theme for a level, especially with the childlike nostalgia thing. So. The pitch here is going to be the thematic experience of the game and how these first two zones are going to work out. And then I'll kind of say I have more zones in the works or something like that. The idea is to have five or six zones. Anyway, today uh, I'm going to be continuing to review the resources and just create a nice pitch outline and how much money, you know, I would need and where that money would go. So my outline is, is going to be pretty straightforward. The presentation is going to be six to eight minutes. I'm giving it on Friday. You can kind of see my calendar in the back here, but I'm looking at Todoist right now. And so tomorrow is I'm just going to sit down for about an hour and just journal my thoughts and then create the slide deck from the outline I'm creating today. Wednesday, I'll be working on the pitch and finalizing it. And then Thursday, we'll be practicing and reviewing. And then Friday, I'll practice it once. And then I will record myself giving the pitch on Zoom to my whole class. And that will be this week's devlog. I think this is a really good pressure for me to get something built on the game. Unlike last week, I will not be recapping everything I've been doing. So I'll be leaving out, build my thing and all that stuff. But I will be doing the similar format and just recording myself doing whatever I'm doing on each day and narrate for the next few days. That being said, without recording any more today, I am going to jump into finishing up this review. Then let's jump to the next three days and my final pitch. It feels like it's all coming up so quick, but uh, this is gonna be exciting. Thanks again for clicking. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Leave a comment and what you've been working on, what your goal has been this week, what your goal is for next week, and we'll talk more at the end. So even though I just said I wasn't going to do this today, here we are. I just used the resources given to come up with what seemed like a pretty good outline for me. Starting off with a small hook, I jumped into the rest of the game and the details that came up in every other pitch that might be important. For example, I'll take lots of inspiration from Edith Finch and show the story of the guy who worked at the fish place to demonstrate the subworld idea. That being done, I quickly finished up and had to move on to the rest of the day, which mostly involved editing and classwork. Okay, so it is Tuesday morning classes in about an hour and a half. I didn't finish the Thursday and Friday reading, so I wanna do a little bit of that. But what I'm going to do right now is take my outline, which I have right here. Maybe you can see that, I don't know. <laughs> Find images from the games that I want to use and just type whatever comes to mind. I can type really fast. If you're not a fast typer, I would honestly just hit the voice note recording on your phone or on your laptop and just start talking. Imagine you were about to give the pitch. What would you say off the cuff? And then work with that. It's a great way to kind of give yourself a little bit of pressure and then just go into it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below. Chances are I won't have a good answer for you, but these devlogs serve as like three purposes. One, to sort of build an audience and a community. Two, to learn from and document. And three, to give you guys what I learned from my experiences. So ask away, give me a prompt and I'd love to answer you in the comments and in the next devlog. Without further ado, let's go into finding some images and word barfing on the page. So during my work session, I ended up coming up with a bang or bad ending while writing the intro to the pitch. And I'm pretty happy with how it came out right there a nice one minute hook. I went to then get some game images and realized I had some footage for a future video of a hat in time. So I took a screenshot from that. Might be weird to have Brazilian Portuguese show up, but whatever. Then the rest of the images from Google and the Trello board for the Pixar-esque characters. And then I wrote out what I believe to be some really good ideas and I'm starting to get a better idea of this whole thing. Okay, so I wanted to really just narrate this all in the timelines, but I'm really happy with what I came up with. I feel really good about this now. All of a sudden, I've got an idea. Oh, and I'm trying to get out of a narrative. I came up with a cool idea, but you all heard that the narrative really just sitting down and trying to just just set a 25 minute timer and just write just look at a blank page for 25 minutes if you have to use boredom to incite creativity it took me like three hours to finally sit down and just do this but boy does it feel good checking that off my task list i'm not doing technicalities right now i'll do my mood board stuff tomorrow time to go read and then head to class all right, Wednesday, we've gotten the CAS versus Tandon video up, reviewed some rules, done some editing for my backgammon video, and now it's time to work yet again on the pitch. Today's goal to be done in the next hour or so is to make the mood board, finishing the script, I don't know why I wrote script, but finishing up that concept in the Word doc, and then moving everything over to the slide deck so that I can then finally prepare the presentation tomorrow. I feel like this is really coming together, and this end goal of having to make a pitch that I have to give to an investor, right? Or, you know, some game studio for what my game 
game is, is incredibly useful in directing what work I'm doing now because I'm not ready to jump into Unreal. My class has been taking up a lot of time and I haven't got any of the coursework done, but I'm hoping to get on that this weekend. Just having this direction of creating a pitch has made me think about what's the general story? What's the thing that should hook a player in? What's the thing that gets put on the Steam page, on the Kickstarter that says, this is why you should buy this game. This is why you should play this game. If you can sell a company on your idea, if my professor can give me good feedback and if he can tell me if I'm going in the right direction, in the wrong direction, that's going to be useful either way and it's just a great place to start. It's also made me think about how can I present the episodic levels of the game to someone so that it sounds like it's something they would want to play. But without further ado, let's jump into the time lapse. Okay, so there was a memory card error, unfortunately, but I finished my mood boards. Pretty straightforward. I, you know, house reality is kind of beige and bland. Beach, very cool picture, I thought. And then Carnival is kind of red and obviously Carnival-esque. So in my last about 15 minutes, I'm gonna take a break before class starts. I'm gonna finish the technicalities on the game design document or well, the concept document that's gonna become the slide deck. And then I'm just gonna make the PowerPoint and then put it all together tomorrow in like an hour and a half-ish because I'll have tomorrow after class as well. And then Friday morning, I'll practice a bunch. Okay, so I was supposed to finalize my pitch this morning, but I got caught up with tabletop simulator scripts. So for our social game, and if you want to know more about this, I think next week or the week after, I'll be releasing the day in the life uh, over JTerm. But scripting code is over here. It's in Lua. It actually wasn't too hard to figure out. I probably spent about three and a half to four hours today in solely Lua scripting for tabletop. I told myself I'd do it for like an hour and a half, two hours this morning, then work on my pitch. But I just want to also show this off a little bit. But now I actually have to get on with my pitch. I'm going to record the devlog part for the game. But yeah, I'm going to pretty much be moving my design document over to my PowerPoint. Should take me 15, 20 minutes. And then I'll practice presenting a few times, two or three times tonight, and we'll see how that goes. All right, and I am done with the pitch. So I'm gonna go through and run this a few times and it'll probably change, but I pretty much have a quick intro slide within my nice log line. I've got some notes, so you know, when it's in presenter view, I can have my stuff on the side. A brief premise about invoking nostalgia. We have our inspiration for visuals. So a hat in time is a really good one because it's a really good perspective that I wanna go for. But the character would be geared more towards something like Frozen, like little baby Anna or Russell from Up, right? The best tip I can give you for slides is to have as little as possible on your slides. Put bulleted lists if you must, but keep everything in your head. You do not want to be reading off of a slide. Seashells an episode of Game at Heart. Oh right, this reminds me to talk all about the zones and the various episodes within the game. I don't know much, but in my experience of public speaking and having fun with it, dare I say I have fun during public speaking, have as little as you can on the slide. Give like two to five seconds of just being on the slide for people to look at what's going on. If there's images, give people time to absorb those images on the slides. Image, image, brief description. You know, this isn't how to do public speaking, but yeah. So I talk about the gameplay here and why it's similar to Edith Finch, why it's similar Similar to have time, I crack a joke about the Brazilian Portuguese, but it's barely visible up there. Then zones and subworlds. The game will evolve over various subworlds or zones. Each zone will be transported as a unique character, a unique world, and a unique problem for the player to solve. These were the mood boards I created. And I'm really happy with how this turned out, actually, because you've got the house just beige, zone one beach is blue, zone two carnival, very, very red. A nice summary, 11 slides, super simple. I'm gonna go through and practice right now, see where the holes are, fill in some notes, and aim for seven minutes. My professor mentioned that he would rather you go over the eight minute mark then go under the six minute mark. So I'm gonna aim for seven and a half minutes. That feels like a really long pitch to me. For me, at four and a half to five minutes is prime time, but not my class, I'm not the pro. Eight minutes gives you a lot of time. So you gotta make sure that you don't only just fill it, but make sure you make it meaningful. So tomorrow is my pitch. I'm also vlogging tomorrow for the day in the life. So if you're curious, you can check that out for sure. And yeah, that's how I am making my pitch for my game. Very exciting. I've been loving this class and it's super practical. So to be a big designer, you don't really have to take a game design class or anything. But the good thing about this is that it's been forcing us to design games. It's been forcing us to make games. I'm gonna finish this up. It is, uh, oh geez, it is 10 p.m. It is 10 out of Yikes, dude. Maybe practice this once or twice. <laughs> I'll catch you in a minute at the pitch. So, hey everybody, uh, my name's Mark. I'm gonna be presenting to you the idea of Seashell. At its core, it's meant to be an episodic adventure composed of subworlds, with the, the primary goal of invoking a sense of childlike imagination. The basic premise of the game is that through this, you know, pretty generic real world, you're able to explore various different subworlds structured as these imaginary lands that make a player uh, more curious or perhaps more nostalgic. There's that common, I guess, tale, you could call it, about when we put a seashell up to our ear, uh, we hear the waves of the ocean. And it's much more fun to imagine that we do than realizing is 
fully jaded adults that we know the reality of it is just sound waves echoing within the shell itself. But as children, we wonder, and that feeling of wonder is what we seek to recapture in Seashell. We want to invoke more of those moments with gameplay, with visual, uh, how it feels to walk around, with music. And through that, Seashell is a 3D game at its core. Uh, and we want to bring back the childhood wonder and uh, I guess make people believe that you are here in the ocean in the shell. That's the feeling we're going for. So playing as a little girl, you get to explore the different areas of your house, which is the reality or zone zero, which I'll get to in a moment. And you get transported to various magical worlds after hearing different items in different objects. A seashell brings you to a mystical underwater world or a toy elephant brings you to a carnival full of eccentric characters where you seek to maintain you know, this childlike wonder and defeat the seriousness of the job. Uh, all of these items uh, serve very similar purposes to the items you might find in an average Zelda game where the boomerang might serve a function to do this, um, you know, the, the wind propeller might bring you up and help you solve this puzzle. And all of these worlds have their own mini plotline, but the overall game, while it's an episodic game at heart, has a a core narrative to have an impact on this real world of the character. So as a girl, this little girl, you're hearing these sounds and you're escaping into these imaginary lands, but they each play into what's going on in the real world and collecting the items in these different subworlds, which you can vary, you can collect all of them or just some of them, will affect the ending of the game itself. And each world will have its own kind of actual reality, uh, its actual meaning for you, the player. And not only are the items unique to each level, but they will all connect to each other and form uh, or perform some fascinating function, um, such as some kind of mechanic. When it comes to the gameplay, uh, I initially took a lot of inspiration of making this into a game like What Remains of Edith Finch, which is a first person walking simulator. And you explore all of the, the ancestors of Edith Finch and um, what their stories were, what happened to them. And I found that to be a really cool presentation of episodic narrative because you get to just play one person in you know 30 minutes not even and you could then come back tomorrow to play another part of the game it was very well uh, separated however I took a lot of inspiration for the visuals of the game from a hat in time which also has a little girl as the main character but it's also a third person so one of the main ideas with seashell is to kind of invoke curiosity and putting you in a first person view kind of restricts that view uh, so having the third person being able to, ooh, you know, there's this thing over there that maybe the character wouldn't see if the camera was from their eyes, you can just go over and explore. In terms of more specific graphics, originally I wanted to take a lot of inspiration um, from Pixar-esque movies. So like the little girl from Frozen, little Anna, or the very eccentric um, behaviors of Russell from Up and kind of bring those into the world and make it feel very alive in order to provide a contrast with what this real world will be. And similar to Pixar movies where they have characters that are things from a fork to a talking dog, the characters in these mini subworlds or zones will have those same kinds of personalities. And again, we have a hat in time on the left because it, it opens up the world a little bit and lets you see things you might not see if you were playing from the character's perspective. Speaking of these zones and subworlds, they're all structured in a pretty similar fashion. And the game will evolve over these different zones. So you complete one, come back to reality, and whatever you completed, you'll be able to then look for other zones. For example, in Super Mario 64, the more stars you unlock, the more areas you're able to explore. So each zone will be transported to in some special way with a unique item, such as the seashell or the toy elephant that I mentioned earlier. And each world will contain a unique character to interact with. It'll be a unique world to explore. So they won't be connected very well, or they'll be tangentially connected, I'll put it. And there will be a unique problem or micro plot line, so to speak, for the player to solve while going through the zones. To get a bit more specific, uh, we have some mood boards here for each of the zones. On the left, we have the house that's pretty beige, pretty generic. And then the zones themselves are a bit more vibrant. So we have the beach taken from Moana and, you know, a Sonic game, a very vibrant blue contrasting with the proper yellow. And then zone two, which would be the carnival, is a lot of reds to cause a lot of excitement. And these colors would tie in with the moods that we want to invoke along with curiosity and nostalgia as you explore these different zones. Um, so going further into the zone example, the beach, for example, would be our location. The seashell 
the item that the girl finds in the house to get there would provide some sort of mechanic, and in this case, it would be illumination. It would serve to provide light as if you're holding a lantern. Our special character in this zone is Carlos. He's an underwater geologist who has been exploring this enroaching darkness upon his underwater world, sort of Atlantic-esque, and asks you, the main character, for help. And the seashell uh, helps uh, directly combat this, this darkness. And the cave here represents this enroaching darkness, and the rest of Carlos's society is all about, no, the darkness has never been a problem. We don't have to worry about it. And so the idea here would be that by using the light, you can illuminate the darkness and maybe have these other citizens of the underwater world become more open-minded to something else. And of course, there's a deeper message for the player to take away um, of being open-minded and tackle problems from new perspectives for different solutions. Uh, jumping into details on the game itself, uh, in terms of technicalities, I envision this to be a PC game at heart. Something that people don't need uh, any intense technology for, and you could play on a laptop you might get at Staples. It would be a walking simulator at its core, because I don't think there should be much reliance on you know jumping or platforming. If there is any combat, it would be very basic, and something to serve as just a slight barrier, um, so we're not getting into 3D visual novel territory in a way. And the 3D graphics would be to appeal to a wide audience. Uh, in a sense, I want it to be a children's game with a deeper meaning for adults. Similar to TV shows, there might be underlying jokes that only adults might understand, but there's a deeper message to take away from it as opposed to jokes, so it would be enjoyable for a very, fairly wide age range. The team I have in mind is a six-person team with overlap and responsibility. For example, we have a designer, but they might also be a developer and vice versa. And the reason why I envision this small team is just from other indie games that I've taken inspiration from, such as Undertale, being a fairly small team, uh, and the game doesn't seem triple A big in my head. And this would be a brief timeline of how I think it could get done. We have our initial game pitch and concept outline this month. The prototype, which would be the real world area and our first beach zone, would be out for March 2021, so we can get a proper feel for the game see how transporting to different worlds might feel. Then in September, after completing approximately one zone per month, we would hopefully have five to seven zones in the end. November 2021, 2021 would be a full game. Hopefully all the various endings would then uh, be worked on to be completed by March 2021. And also stretch goals, for example, letting a co-op player uh, control the second character, such as Carlos in the beach zone. So that is the core of Seashell. We want to bring a reprieve into the jaded world of being an adult and invoke feelings of wonder, curiosity, and through the game and its gameplay, most importantly, nostalgia. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I wanted to present it in such a way that like a kid could play this game, but kind of like Undertale it might not exactly be. So I probably leaned a bit too much in the wrong direction with that. All right, pitch complete. That was... <laughs> How do I make videos and this stresses me out so much? I think the two big takeaways I got from it were my TA was saying like this stuff about kids and the platform being on mobile games and I realized I don't really want it to be a kid's game. I guess that was just a way for me to try and describe the aesthetic so it was good to hear that it came across that way because it's not really what I want to go for. And I, I think visually in a sense, like those kinds of graphics are for kids. The, there's no bad language, stuff like that is what I'm going for, but it's not for a kid, so to speak. So I definitely need to work on that. And then the other big thing I took away was that from these explaining these zones, there's no connection or clear connection or inspiration as to why this girl wants to teleport to these worlds. In my head, there's something, not nefarious, something bad going on in this in this little girl's life. Their parents are arguing or something, and so she goes to explore the closet, finds a seashell, and something like that. I mean, we have the ending and what might be bad about the ending, but some way to motivate someone to want to explore these worlds makes a lot of sense. Pitch was pretty good. We're taking a small break, and then I'm gonna get it back into class. But yeah, if you have any feedback for me, I would love to hear it. If you've watched the last couple of devlogs and there's something you heard like, I thought he was, he was meaning to do this, definitely let me know because that's a really good contrast to have and this will be something really good to reflect on in the future should I ever pitch this game again if I'm not making it on my own for a while. Shout out to my friend Jack for being the one who came up with this idea. I'm just making it into, into a thing, I guess. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this devlog and I'll see you next week. I think we're going to dive a bit more into Unreal and the specifics of that depending on how intense the class is. Don't forget to leave your comments on what you're working on in the description down below because I'm going to get to last week's devlog and this week's devlog comments and stuff next week. Just want to really focus on the pitch today. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.